Hello and welcome back to another video. If you have been here before, then it's nice to see your face again. If you haven't, then my name is James and I am a beginner photographer slash filmmaker. And if that's something you're interested in, then please consider subscribing to my channel so you can follow me on my journey. So we are back inside the budget garage studio and it's been some time since I've actually sat here and made some videos for you guys to watch. Now I don't know about you, but this second lockdown has sort of killed all creativeness that I've had. But the weather's improving, mine's improving, the videos are going to improve and they will be coming out thick and fast. One thing that hasn't changed is that I still do bring a coffee out with me because, well, we might be seeing the sun but it's still pretty cold to be fair. But anyway, let's get on with today's video. So if you share the same interest as me, you would have been watching Peter McKinnon's latest videos. And in these videos, he's talking about gear and actually how much gear he's got and comparing it to how much he actually needs. Now, being a beginner, I do actually have quite a lot of gear just for taking photos and making videos. But the question I ask myself is, if you are starting out in YouTube or starting out in photography, do you really need all the gear? So that's what I'm gonna be testing today. Now, if you've watched my what's in the bag video that I have on my channel, you've probably already seen what I'm about to show you. But if you haven't, over the last three or four years, I've been making videos or taking photos purely for personal enjoyment. And it's only the past couple of years that I've actually put them online on YouTube for people to watch. Now, in those three or four years, I think potentially my skills have improved. So with that, I have improved my camera gear. So a quick history lesson. I actually started off with a GoPro session and that was the cheapest GoPro you could buy. And I used that for the helmet cam. And also I made a travel video when we went on holiday to Greece. Now in time I did sell that and I upgraded to the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Now this camera is incredible for its size and for what it does. But for more content I went to create different types of videos, I upgraded this. I went from this to the Canon G7X. Great for photos, great for videos, great for travel vlogs if you're really interested because it is so small. Now, I then wanted to change again and take more in-depth photos or create more, for me, better videos and do more talking head. Now, the one thing with this is you can attach an external microphone. So that's why I bought this. This camera right now I'm using is a Canon 250D and have an external microphone sat just there, just out of screen so you can't see it. Now, these cameras are great, but we all have one camera, or most of us have one camera with us all the time. And that's your phone. Now, I got thinking, I have a good phone. I have a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Now, the question I ask myself is, if I have this, do I really need all of these if I'm starting out of photography? So that's the test. I'm going to set up some props and we're going to take that photo four times, once each on each camera. We're going to use the Canon 250D, the Canon G7X Mark II, the GoPro Hero 7 Black and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. So to keep it under control, I'm going to light it the same way, not move any props in between pictures and use the auto function on every single camera. Now with this, if you are a beginner and you're anything like me, it takes time to learn about ISO and shutter speeds and all that sort of stuff. So I'll be setting up an auto mode all the way through. So the first thing I've done is I've pushed the desk to the back of the room. The reason I've done this is because it's closer to the black background. And although it is an absolute pain having a black background whilst making videos, for photos it's really good. If you've got something bright, it can really make that colour pop. So that is the first test. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some colour to the photo. Now how I'm going to do this is by putting down this green felt on top of the table. Now between the brightness of this green and the darkness of the background, it should be a good test for the cameras. Now when I say green felt, what I actually mean is that bit of material that you get in that poker set when you're about 13, 14 and you never find a use for it, found one. So time to start adding subjects to the photo. Now how much can you tell that I'm sat in a garage and choosing my props whilst here? Football boots. Most people have got them, but maybe not everyone's got them like this, but I do. Another decent colour to have in the photo. So I've got my boots in the frame, and you may be able to guess the next item I'm about to bring out. I've got my football boots, I've got my green top, potentially a grass, but I am going to bring a football out, but I'm going to appeal to the American viewers. I'm going to put down my American football. Now the reason behind this is it's got plenty of detail on the ball, I quite like this gold accent and I think that could be a good test for the cameras. 
So we'll put that in there. And that will be our main subject. So with my picture set up, I'm gonna take the photo with all four different cameras and then I will meet you back over there and we should review the results. Right, so here we are, pictures uploaded onto the iPad, sitting at the table and we shall review what we've just taken. So straight away, let's start off with the cheapest camera I have and that is the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Now one thing you need to remember before I show you this is the fact that GoPro don't market this camera as a photography camera. It's more of an action cam. It's more for your extreme sports and obviously just travel friendly videos. Now if you are interested in seeing what a GoPro can do, head over to my cousin's channel. Um, she creates some absolute unbelievable footage by using the GoPro and that is something you definitely want to watch. I will put a link in the description down below so you can head over there and check it out. Now, moving on to the picture. So first thing I noticed when looking at this picture is how wide that shot is. Now I actually took this in linear mode which is supposed to be the tightest function that they do on the GoPro cameras. But you can still see it looks like I'm so far away from the subject. Now picture quality wise, colours on the green isn't too bad, um, the blue's a bit washed out, the black's washed out and there's not much brown coming in and not much detail. But all in all, as a GoPro for taking photos in a dark room, that isn't that bad. And if that's something you're interested in, then a GoPro. But mainly for me, GoPros are used for making those videos. Next up, we're gonna be looking at the Canon G7X Mark II. Now to me, this looks like a good picture. The green is slightly not as bright as let's say the GoPro was, but you can see the blue in the background really popping. You can just see the pink as well, slightly off the back of the boots. But the brown, on the ball is much more detailed and I do think that it is pretty decent in auto mode and it's a great point and shoot camera if you're just out and about and you want to take those quick photos and you're not going to want to carry the DSLR around but all in all I think that is a pretty good picture. Next up I have my phone now this phone is a Samsung S21 Ultra and to be fair, it's taken not a bad picture. I've got a nice blurry boots in the background, the green's popping out, and the detail on the ball, I do think, is pretty good. And you've got to remember, this is a phone. This is something that you carry around with you most days. So if you do need that quick picture, you've always got it with you. So for me, that's quite a success. And I know that they do have pro modes on these, so you can change the ISO, the white balance, and all that sort of stuff. But what you've got to remember is we went straight up auto for this little battle. But all in all, I do think that S21 is good. So next up, we're going to be looking at the Canon 250D's pictures. And I did cheat a little bit on that one, but I'll explain that later. This was shot with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens, which is what I'm using now. Not perfect for photography, but I had it on the camera. I wanted to keep everything as close as possible. So I already had it on the camera. So I decided to use that lens to take the photos with. Now looking at the picture, you can see it's got a bit more of a DSLR vibe to it. The main subject being the football or the American football, is starting to really pop out the golds on there you can see the reflection of the green in the gold and the detail for me does look a bit better and you can see what i like most about dslrs is the blurry background the boots in the background are not in focus they're slowly softening out if you look at the green top at the front it is in focus and if you follow it back it slowly blurs out and that's the effect that i love so i do think it's not done a bad job but this style of photo would need editing but I do shoot in RAW, so that's not difficult. So the next photo I did cheat on, I changed this lens, the 10 to 18, to the 50 millimeter lens. Now, I love the 50 millimeter lens, and the reason behind that is you can change the aperture right down real low, so you can really get blurry items in the background. The main item is always super crisp, the back item, or things further away from the main items, are always nice and soft and blurry. So I'm gonna show you that photo. Now to me, this looks more of a typical product photography. This, I mean, you can see the boots, you can tell what the boots are, but they're nice and soft. You can still see some minor detail, the laces, the badge, and the pink just slowly poking through. But then you've got the ball. The ball itself is super crisp. You can tell that that is the main subject and that is what I wanted the picture to show. The black in the background is slightly blurred out. It's not as noisy as it has been in others and the green, you can see the detail around the ball. But all in all, that is the downside of using a DSLR. 
To get different results, you need different lenses, and that's where the cost comes in. So there it is, I've took the same photo four times with four different cameras. And now really, the choice is yours. Could you get away with just using your phone for photography? 100%, of course you could. Could you use a GoPro? Yes, you could. Your results might not be perfect, but you could still get that shot and it's small enough to keep in your pocket. G7X, great little point and shoot. No interchangeable lenses, so you do sort of set with the lenses that you've got, but all in all, it is a great camera and it works really, really well in low light. Now this, the DSLR, as good as it is, and I do enjoy using it so much, it comes with some downsides. I've got the camera body, I've also got three lenses on top of that, and each one of those lenses does a different thing. Now, I do think the results are better, but are the results for a beginner or an amateur worth the extra cost of buying the camera? Now, the only person that can decide that is you. For me, I made that choice and I bought the camera. It is the cheapest camera they do, but I do think that it was worth the spend if the type of photography you want to get into is product photography and that's exactly what I want to do. So with all that being said and done, I am going to end this video here. If you did enjoy this video and you want to see more comparisons between the gear that I've got, then let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video and hit that subscribe button so you know when I next upload. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. The G7X Mark II, the GoPro Hero 7 Black, and the, I the iPhone Donut. Thank you.